cool. Yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, this this one was tough because it, it was it would have been a waste of time for Ava to put all in there because it's all predicated upon bracket play. Do we have logo for the for the prior game? Do we have logos for the prior game? Okay. I'm surprised David didn't put one in for Gilman. That's your school. Uh, make sure you change that from Tyrone to Gary Schofield. I think that's what you're, why it's in program. But uh, just make sure you change that. There we go. Let's go on sports. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Yeah, we're going on five. I love it. Murray School's the frogs. <laughs> here on day five of the Governor's Challenge, and for the first time this week, we've got a bracket championship here on the Delmarva Sports Network. It's the Murray School from D.C. taking on the Highland School, the number four team in the state of Virginia, going at it, trying to bring home bracket 11 banners. Gary Schofield, Tim Nolan. Gary, again, happy to have you. And what you guys have done, you, Andre Collins, Coach Jason Kraft, and all these people joining us as color, putting on that coach's headset and, you know, joining us to give us time to prep, nap, do whatever to survive in this tournament. It's the utmost help. So, again, first and foremost, thank you for being on. It's absolutely my pleasure. I mean, anytime I get a chance to – Watch some quality hoops and hang out with you guys and just provide a little bit of spark and energy. It uh, gives me something to, uh, you know, hang my hat on and have a lot of fun with, and I'm looking forward to a big game today. You're going to get some quality hoops when these two teams get together. The Murray School in D.C., they're in a conference with Sidwell Friends, the number 16 high school team of the country. Meanwhile, the Highland School coming in with a lot of hype. They've got a guard committed to Navy, also a hooper committed to to Mount Olive School, so they got some talented Collins shout. In fact, the head coach is on this squad. Those two guys, both of them, D3 experience. They graduated from the school in 2014. Now they're bringing that knowledge from the next level back down to the high school frame. And, you know, their guys trying to pick up a championship W here before the new year. Yeah, big way as they're continuing to try to big uh, build this program. And, you know, you can see where their experience, that pedigree that they bring from that college experience plays in to kids that now are committed to play at the next level. But what I love is how they talked about the leadership that a guy like DJ Johnson brings, helping along the young guys. You know, oftentimes when you have superstar players, the leadership quality sometimes aren't there, but obviously they are with DJ. I'm excited to see uh, how he helps build this team and, and maybe lead them to a title today. Meanwhile, getting a look at the Murray School, and most notably for those of you Maryland Hoops fans, Chuck Drizel coaches the squad. He's in his eighth season, and he's the son of the great lefty Drizel, the head coach. He was the first to win 100 games with three different programs, a Naismith Hall of Famer, still kicking it at the ripe age of a young, young 91 years old. Drizel, the legend, and his son's also been around the college game, coached with pops up at James Madison. He was also at Marymount for six seasons, an assistant at Georgetown, his alma mater where he played with the Terps. Most recently, head coach of the Citadel from 2010 to 2015. And now he's leading the Murray School, and he's got some talented bigs on the inside. This group led by Manny Tucker and Mokaya Marable, 6'7 and 6'9 respectively, both those kids averaging double figures. And they've, po they've paced the Murray School out to a 7-2 start to the season. And, you know, with a name like Drizel, it's immediate respect. You know, people understand the pedigree, the success that they've had, but obviously he's trying to build his own legacy now by bringing this program along. And winning a championship today would be a great way to do that, but it doesn't surprise me as a kid that grew up in the Drizelle household that, you know, he talks about his key being energy, effort, focus, the things that, you know, classic competitive 
college basketball coaches will always preach to their kids. So uh, we'll see that discipline on display here today. Uh, to give you an idea of uh, some of the names that Father Lefty cultivated, recruited Moses Malone, Len Bias, might have heard of those guys. Uh, so Murray School in great hands with Chuck Drizel and you know, some great stuff that you kind of talked about building that program that Logan Miller has done with the Highland School. He said that they were nowhere where they are right now back in 2014 when he was a Hawk, and, and now he's got this squad in the top five in the whole state of Virginia. And in fact, they're ranked by Max Preps number seven in the Metro. Looking to pick up a big win here in the championship bracket, and we've got starters first quarter action coming up in just a couple of moments, just over a minute to go before the bracket 11 final kicks off here from court one. Exciting day at Governor's Challenge Jackson. The final here on Friday kicks off in just a couple of moments. Murray School, Highland School coming up on the other side here on DSN. What'd you say, Brian? Welcome back here to Core One before the Murray School and Highland School tip off. Game two today we got for you two of six. The Delmarva Sports Network to cap our Governor's Challenge coverage here on the Delmarva Sports Network. A championship game between the Hawks and the Frogs got to be one of the best mascots we've had this entire <laughs> tournament. Yeah, I mean, there have been some good ones. Uh, that certainly takes the cake. It's interesting, you know, when you, when you talk about mascot names, you usually try to think about, you know, uh, an intimidating animal or like a knight or a crusader. Frogs don't necessarily put a lot of fear in the heart of your opponent, but I think that's what, uh, you know, makes it so fun. You want great mascot names. Last night in the dunk contest, a representative is going to be a future banana slug for the next four years of college. It's got to be one of the best at the next level in the college game. For the Murray School, we're going to get the starters for both these squads in just a minute. They got here after a 57-42 win over Moon Area from Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, Highland School took down John Carroll in Maryland, 69-56. to We're going to get the starters for both teams in just a moment. It'll be the Highland School in white. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Murray School rocking green as true to the mascot. The Hawks get announced first in their starting lineup, led by DJ Johnson and Cameron Cole in the backcourt. Evan Thornton, the forward. Another guard, Kai Johnson and Chance Perkins ran at the starting lineup. A lot of guys like to go, go, go. Coach Logan Miller telling us, look, we defend, we rebound, and then we're off to the races. The Murray School get announced first in the other side. DJ Hill, a freshman point guard who Tuck Drizell says that I have never had a freshman play like him. Time will tell just how good this kid can be. Leads the team with two steals per game and also has 2.7 assists. And I think the cool part of that story is, you know, DJ Hill's going to be fun to watch tonight, but his partner in the backcourt, James Lerner, who's a senior, was the point guard for this team. But for a senior to be able to step aside and let a freshman take over at the point, uh, that shows a lot of character on his part, but also about how talented DJ is and knowing what's best for the team. Also joining them in the starting lineup. We mentioned the two big men down low, Manny Tucker, Malkai Marable, and then Alexander Mostashari is going to be that swing guard forward. He stands at six foot five and hits a lot of shots from the perimeter. He's getting some feelers in college right now, especially because he has had an awfully nice start to the winter pacing the Frogs. I'm excited to see the big guys play. Uh, most of the games that I've seen this week have really been dominated by great guard play. There hasn't been a lot of classic, you know, play on the block, show me some post moves. So that seems to be what Murray wants to do, and I'm excited to see that offense run. It's worth noting, too, that the uh, the guard playing, the slashing, it's done by kids who are six foot seven, six foot eight <laughs> these days playing that guard forward. And, you know, I love how some coaches described it. Some of them, especially at the, at the prep division and the showcase, they just give us rosters that say wing, post, wing, post, guard. 
there's no real center. It's just kids who get up and down the floor and can guard one through five. Yeah, it's the way the game has evolved. You know, shooting is at a premium at this point anymore. You know, the, the days of the Hakeem Patrick Ewing down low matchups are really a thing of the past. It's a matter of how well can you move the ball, how many threes can you sink, and you got to be able to do both as a big anymore. Johnson in for the tip, going up against the six foot nine Marable. And it's one away by the Hawks and controlled by Kai Johnson. Up top, the point guard now directing traffic, Cam Cole. Highland School coming into this contest nine and two to start 2022 2023. Three from the wing. It's short and the rebound by the smallest guy on the floor, the five foot eight DJ Hill. Quickly ahead in transition through contact, a blocking call. On the floor. Well, showing off the speed there for DJ Hill. Coming away with that rebound, as you mentioned, the smallest guy on the floor. But you see why Coach Drizel is so excited about him. You'll see the quickness after he grabs the rebound on the Blanca of Salisbury replay and his ability to just one step drive the basket and draw the foul. Yeah, puts on the burners and one step into the chest of DJ Johnson. So it puts DJ Hill at the line. A freshman who, Brazil says, is lightning quick, handles pressure well. He's nothing but nylon in the first attempt. Stand out on the hardwood, but also showed his prowess on the, uh, the gridiron this year at 5'8 to score 34 touchdowns. That is quite a feat. A yeah, talented slot receiver as well. I'm sure he's got a bright, bright future ahead. Nets a pair. The early lead goes to the Frogs. Open three from the wing. Lead right back to the Hawks. Triple hit from Chance Perkins. Feed inside, Marable. Triple team to the interior, and he'll head to the stripe for a pair. And that's how the offense is gonna run for Murray. Coach Drizel says the keys are getting the ball down low and scoring around the basket, and obviously Highland is prepared for that as soon as that ball went inside. Tough delivery and a great catch on the entry pass there, but immediately triple team. Great job of drawing the foul and getting to the line. Akaya okay, Marable misses the first attempt. Griselle says that it's a number of schools who come to watch him. He's their leading scorer with 13.3 points per game and 11 boards. A walking double-double for the Frogs. And the other half of the M&M Bros. It's a second free throw, ties us up at three. Perkins over half, knife's in the lane. Runner left it short. Rebound brought down, and the finish good. Layup up and in. That rebound converted by Evan Brown. Another freshman that is uh, opening eyes. Great job on the offensive glass against the M&M brothers, and a great finish. Masashari with it, top of the key. Those two play give and go. It's knocked out of bounds, out of the hands of Marable. Back-to-back -back possessions with not very easy entry passes, but Marable showing his ability to extend. He's got great length and be able to catch both those passes. Difficult entries will have to try to find some easier ways to get down low as the game progresses. They go a the long way to Lerner. Shot clock down to 13. Screen coming from Marable. Lerner kick out. Hill down to eight. Drives baseline. Swatted away. Foul first. You get a blocking foul, and that will be the second Called against Kai Johnson. We'll take another look at the Blanca Salisbury replay here as the ball comes to DJ Hill in the corner. Look at the quickness to get to the baseline. A little bit of body contact before Evan Brown was able to swat that away, but uh, two fine freshmen on display there. Julian Rivera heads to the scorer's table. Check that. That last foul called on Cam Cole. Hill back to the line. The freshman remains perfect at the strike. Keys to the game for Murray School is getting the ball down low, scoring around the basket, and getting assists as opposed to turnovers. So far, plus in that category. Four for four to start the little morning here for DJ Hill. Rivera checking in. He's going back and forth. Cole directing traffic. The engine and the floor general on the court for a Highland School. 
Step back, fall away. Left it short, rebound tracked down by Rivera. Press shot clock. Perkins inside, too high. Was unable to be saved off the end line by Cole. Coach Drizell not going to be happy. I mean, they talk about you know their big man play being a key. Two straight possessions, giving up an offensive rebound. Not able to cash in that time for Highland, but uh, they've got to do a better job defending the defensive glass. Hill working on Cole. Flash high from Marable. Pass around, first substitute for the Frogs, and there's the pull-up three-pointer, Masashari off the glass. Bryce June checking in. Committed to Yale for football. Cole through contact, cross court. Perkins already one three-pointer, that one rattles in and out. Rebound, falls to the Navy, commit. And the stuff in the other end, no good. But again, second chance opportunity for Highland. That's their third possession in a row. They've been able to get an offensive rebound twice, however, unable to turn that into points as ball goes out of bounds. Looks like it's actually going to stay with Highland. Yeah, Logan Miller tells us that this kid Cole competes at a high level, refused to give up on that play, and wins another possession for the Hawks. Perkins guarded by Marable. Rivera gives off for Cole, under 20 on the shot clock. Works off the screen, give and go, nice look inside. It's tipped out of bounds, June was trying to hook up. Evan Brown came free there on the block. Pass went, I thought it was deflected by one of the Murray defenders and now they changed that so the ball will stay down here to Highland. But as you said, just a beautiful look there from DJ Johnson. DJ Johnson committed to Mount Olive. And go the long way to Cole with 13 on the shot clock. Down to six, over to Perkins. Hand off Rivera with three. Down to two, to one, has to get a runner off. Missed everything, a rebound for the Frogs. Spacing was a little off on that set play as DJ and Rivera were a little too close together. Made it more difficult to get that shot off. Double top of the key, Lerner works off the screen from June. They get him for the moving. I will say too, I mean, I, the games that I've been a part of this week, Got to give credit to the officials. They've done a really nice job of letting the kids play, uh, but, you know, calling the obvious stuff. I haven't heard a ton of disagreement with the Zebras. I mean, you'll have that from time to time, but uh, for the most part, I think they've been outstanding. Well, and those that worked the early games, really luck out. Coaches, they got a quick turnaround from last night. <laughs> Just kind of letting the game go. Goal picked up at half court by Mastashari. Spin back, three-pointer. The sophomore cans the triple from straight away. Jeremiah Gorham, first bucket, gives the lead to Highland School. Masashari into the lane. Over the contact, no call. Follow, missed by Marable. Dotson up ahead. Rivera ahead of steam. Lefty finish goes. Great job on the outlet pass, and then Rivera, great body control to keep the defender away from the ball and going with the left off glass. DJ Miller back ahead in transition, lost the handle. Goes through his legs. They get a grazing of the calf. They go over the Highland School. Miller tells us that Julian Rara finishes at the rim about as good as anyone. Saw it on display there. Well, we've seen his work on the offensive boards as well. He's got two of those. Just real active down low. You know, he's obviously given up some size to the m, &M brothers, but it hasn't worked against him thus far. Nifty move through traffic. That's smooth by Cole. It's going to get a timeout from Chuck Drizell. Well, what we've seen in the first four and a half minutes of this first quarter are really much all the reasons why Highland is the number four team in Virginia. They've shot the ball well. They've rebounded fantastically. Very active on the defense, creating turnovers against Murray as well. So it's been an awesome effort all around. That's Giselle about, you know, this circuitous coaching route that started all the way back in 1985. Taking a look at that last replay, the, the finish by Cole. Just, hey, this guy glides through traffic. I think that's the best verb to describe some of these 
top level college recruits we've seen here. They just play the game with such a silky smooth style. Yeah, it's it's not in you know it, it's one of those things when you see it, it's it just pops at you like his ability to, to take that first dribble behind the back to get the step on the defender and then finish. Uh, silky is a great way to describe it, uh, but when you see those those talents on display, it's just it's at another level. Obvious why he's going to be uh, you know going to Navy next year and playing at the uh, at the D1 level. It's uh, impressive. Hill picked up at half court by Rivera. Seven point lead for Highland School. Feet inside. Marable corralled it and then knocked away. Nice pass up ahead in transition. Leia missed. There for the follow. Johnson, it'll stay on this end. Yeah, you know, Lerner did just enough to try to alter that shot a bit, which uh, got it a little too high off the glass which caused the miss, but again, the tenacity of the Highland defense, that triple team comes immediately, making life difficult for Marable down low. What a beautiful entry there. And no one home, that's a mistake for DJ Johnson. Easiest layup of his life, gives it a nine point lead for the Hawks. So Shari works off the screen. That's another moving pick set by the Frogs. Fantastic job by Cole to get around the screen and then it was the forearm uh, from Mostashari that drew that foul. You know, it's just it's one of those things. You just keep that arm in and work through the contact, you're going to be fine. But as soon as they see that arm extend, they're going to get called every time. Gets pulled out, talks it over with his coach. Meanwhile, into the ball game for the first time, freshman guard Nick Pierce. Cole working off screens. Rivera kick out. Gorham back for Rivera. Southpaw three straight away pops off. Tucker back for Hill. Lerner's trying to work off the screen from Tucker. They deny the pick and roll. Wrap around pass to the opposite side with Marable. Backing down his defender. Too far under the basket. But they got for stepping on the end line, Gorham. Couldn't tiptoe. As, as much as I was looking forward to seeing the play down low, I've been more impressed with what the Highland defense has been able to do. You know, with those immediate double, sometimes triple teams, just making everything hard for Marable as he's trying to get to the get to the rim and just couldn't do it again there. Paris lets one fly from the corner. And another great box out from the Hawks. That time Cole bringing down the miss. Rivera. Through the defense, DJ Johnson, corner three, no. Rivera, the miss. A fresh shot clock for the Hawks. Logan Miller wants him to run some clock. Up top, Cole, guarded by Paris. Fall away, Rivera in the corner, guarded by Marable. Gets to the cup. Blocking foul called. Coach Drizel doesn't agree with that call at all, but you know, that whole Sequence starts with another offensive rebound by Rivera, just darting in from the wing to get that loose ball, sets a new possession, and then he drives to the rim. We'll take another look here at the Planka Salisbury replay as he'll come in from the opposite corner to drive baseline. And as he goes up, can't quite see it, just a little bit of body contact from Marable as he goes up to the rim. Can't get the finish, but we'll see if he can get two free throws. I feel like that whole shot was a short joke from our director on poor <laughs> DJ Hill down there. <laughs> just left out of the frame. And he takes the block and Rivera misses. It remains 14 to five. He'll bring it up the floor. Entry pass over for June and back up top, Tucker. Kind of runs that point center position at times. Hill kept the pivot. Down to 12 on the shot clock, Lerner with it. Stagger screen, stolen away Rivera. Multiple Hawks running the floor. Doesn't matter, Rivera, smooth touch with the right hand. Man, he has been the standout of the quarter thus far with another steal and showing a great ability to ball handle to get around one defender and get an easy lay in to make it a 11 point game.
Lerner, another steal, Rivera. Feed inside a Cole, the pirouette. Missed the layup. Gets the miss and puts it home. Great work by Evan Brown running the floor. It's a 13-point advantage with 50 seconds to go in the quarter. Yeah, you love to see those hustle plays for Evan Brown to be able to finish that off. But you mentioned the steal from Rivera. What a beautiful pass to get that fast break opportunity started after the pick. He's falling out of bounds and has the presence of mind to look down court to find Cole who couldn't finish, but Evan Brown, Johnny on the spot, 13 point game, everything going right for Highland this far. When asking Coach Rizal about you know, being a basketball life or shifted to the Highland School, if we can go back to the Murray School for just a moment, you know, what's kept you in the game? You, know, you started this coaching journey all the way back in 1985. You said the most fulfilling part has been the relationships, watching the players grow, do well, be happy, go to college, the pros, just watching the kids get better year to year and keeping in touch has been the most fulfilling part. You know, something's got to be it. You've been coaching for 37 years now, a legendary family in and around the DMV. Well, I imagine that's something he grew up around too. I mean, as long as his dad was in the game, as many relationships as, as he built through the years, that's got to be something that as you grow up and you see how cool that is, something you you aspire to and you just soak in all that knowledge and it's paying off for him now. Another takeaway for the Highland School. Hawks run tempo, kick out, Cole, pull up three from the wing, short, there's Rivera and another lay-in. Again, another offensive rebound. You know that'll be a point of emphasis for Coach Drizel between quarters and obviously at half, but you know Highland's just been more active, uh, especially on the defensive end, tipping passes, forcing turnovers. It's been an impressive effort. Well, for what it's worth, Max Preps has Highland School number seven in the Metro. Meanwhile, Moret School down, Moret School, excuse me, down at number 78. And that three-pointer cuts it back to 12 with three seconds to go. Yeah, freshman Paris knocking that down. That's a huge bucket for Murray before the end of the quarter. Uh, for eight minutes where a lot didn't go right to be able to at least come out with something positive as they'll try to cut into a 12 point deficit as we start period number two. And meanwhile, Rivera nearly just hit one for three quarter <laughs> court. Everything going right for the Highland School after eight minutes of play. Second quarter coming up as the Gov Challenge rolls on here on the Delmarva Sports Network. He was mentioning uh, at the end to thank Jeff Melvin, who's rolling breaks back in the studio, if you're going to thank everybody. Welcome back, second quarter about to get rolling here. The Highland School out to a 20 to eight advantage entering the second quarter of play alongside Gary Schofield. Tim Nolan with all of you on the Delmarva Sports Network. Hawks, Logan Miller told us defense and rebound and then we're off to the races. It's been exactly that through eight. Absolutely and you know leading the charge in that first quarter is the junior guard Julian Rivera who coach calls uh, arguably the toughest kid on the squad. His ability to get offensive rebounds and get out in transition has been Fun to see, and it's led Highland out to this big lead. There's Rivera again. Up ahead in transition, all alone this time. Easy finish with the left. Yeah, it's like right on cue, you know. Gets in the passing lane again, gets the steal, takes it on his own, another easy lay-in finish, 14-point lead. Paris bumped through contact. And on the other end of the floor, Evan Brown, the freshman. Good length on defense. Yeah, he's been impressive as well. A couple of blocks, uh, forced a turnover a couple of possessions ago in the first quarter. Nice uh, offensive rebound and finish. Uh, he showed off you know, a bright future he has as he's only going to continue to grow. Marable over the defense, missed everything. First time he's had a one-on-one -on -one look and just comes up short. 
Brown ran the floor well in transition, but took too many steps. Ray School going a little more small ball, if you will. So you got Hill running the point. Lerner on the floor along with most of Shari. And kind of a fourth guard set with the freshman Nick Paris on the floor as well. Dribbles off the feet of Marable. Transition opportunity with Brown. Through Hill. And the follow missed as well. But another offensive rebound for Highland. Paris corner three ball. That miss short, strong rebound. Marable can't get the roll, and Rivera brings down the miss. Gorham slows the pace, guarded by Paris. Kick back up top. Perkins with the rock. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Guarded by Masashari. Spin back up top. Gorham. Nice in the lane through contact. No call. It's picked up by the Frogs. Lerner, cross court. Mostashari. Working baseline. Gets in the lane. Glances off the glass. They haven't had a lot of uh, open opportunities throughout this first half. Uh, two in a row, and one by Maribel, and then that one there. Just almost as if surprised that there wasn't a hand in their face. And the shot's just off. Ball in the corner, back up top. Miller wants his guys to move the rock. Rivera dribbling on Marable. Goes to the deck, steal by Paris. And he's foul going up for the lay-in. Yeah, and the freshman guard, he's provided a bit of a spark off the bench for Murray. He hit that three at the end of the first quarter. And uh, Coach Drizel says, you know, he's real savvy. He's got a good body. Uh, he's got strength, mind. He's always getting minutes off the bench. And you can see why as he's provided some quality ones thus far. Gets the steal, runs the floor, draws the foul. Get the foul called on Cameron Cole. Paris misses the first. Reminder, this game was 5-5 in the first quarter. It's been a lot to a little since, a 17-3 extended run for the Hawks. Yeah, Murray's just trying to figure out, you know, how to get good looks offensively. It started with what we thought it would be, working the ball down low, but the immediate double and triple teams from Highland really kind of handcuffed Maribel, and now they've been trying to find ways to find open looks on the wing. You mentioned they went a little smaller to start this quarter, uh, doing anything they can to try to find some offense. After the make, they go pressure. Perkins works past Hill. Feed over to Brown in the corner. Spinning on Marable, fall away, too short. Rebound fought for, Rivera brings down the board. Inside, DJ Johnson, not enough in the reverse. And another rebound tracked down by Rivera. And look at the hustle play. You know, he comes from down on the baseline, tips the ball away, retrieves it, keeps it from going over and back with the save and a fresh shot clock and a chance to score. They get a moving pick set by Highland School. But, you know, Rivera, talking to Miller last night, he said that Rivera's arguably the toughest kid on the squad. He's improved the three, gets to the boards, and hey, this kid's doing it all on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he's been the MVP thus far. Not somebody that we necessarily expected that from, but uh, it's been fun to watch. What's the Shari feed inside? Marable can't get it to go, and Rivera another miss. Really, he felt he was fouled by Brown there, but good defense again. And it's, again, it's just the activity. It's different bodies constantly getting to the ball for Highland, uh, really just putting that pressure on Murray every time down on the offensive end. Gorham works off the screen with Brown. Picks up the dribble, so they go the long way to Perkins. Under 10 on the shot clock. Inside feed, mismatch. Marable knocked it away from Brown. Sashari to the cup. Lefty no good, follow there from Marable. Great Timeout job. Timeout called for by the Highland School. Sorry, Tim, Marable starts that with the swat of the, uh, the, the Highland player uh, in the lane and then does a great job of following the play, running the floor, and picks up the trash to finish, gets it down to an 11 point game. What Murray did do there is now they've switched to a zone defense. When they were running that man to man in the first quarter, I loved watching Highland. 
ton of motion, swinging the ball. Uh, every time you get a switch up to a zone, it's almost like it slows everything down. And they were trying to get a little bit more on the block with Evan Brown. Uh, so the last couple of possessions have been difficult for them to find, you know, the key to breaking that zone. Taking a look at that follow there from Lakaya Marable off the miss layup from Ostashari. And we can go back to the Highland School huddle. It's, it's really cool just looking at that dynamic in that coaching huddle because Logan Miller and R.J. Johnson, those guys ran the backcourt for the Hawks back in 2014. Both of them went on to play college hoops. One at Virginia Wesley and the other at Christopher Newport. Miller ended up doing a little assistant coaching at Christopher Newport the past three seasons. And this is his first year with the Highland School. He's got the Hawks off to an awful good start to the season. Can't hurt when you got two college commits, including one to Navy and Cam Cole. And you asked him why he joined the Gov Challenge. He said we were looking through the schedule, wanted to put together some good early season tests in year one. And he's familiar with the UMES and Salisbury staffs. So they spoke highly of it. They also... Glad they got bumped up a couple brackets. You know, they said, look, our schedule back home in Virginia, not many cupcake games, so you didn't want any here. And, and so far, they've taken care of business. They certainly have. I mean, they've, they've, they've done everything well. They've shot the ball well. The rebounding has been phenomenal, especially on the offensive end. And then the defense has just been tenacious. Gorham. Missed the runner. Lerner left alone on the wing. Inside. Maribel went for the stuff, had it blocked away. Second chance opportunity. Now good for Tucker. Nice tiptoe action there from Gorn to keep it in. 11 point lead for the Hawks. Rivera. Most Shari switches on to him. Marable fighting with Brown, and they get the big man for the foul. Good hands by Marable to get in the passing lane and tip that away, but trying to go through Brown to get the loose ball and commits the foul. Cole comes in to relieve the freshman, Evan Brown. Warm guard of the length of the floor by DJ Hill. Inside drive, good cross court. Rivera, kick out. Three from the wing, Perkins connects. Julian Rivera stirring the drink again. He had the drive and then the dish to find him in the corner. Big three for Highland and they're up by 14. Largest lead of the game for the Hawks. Lerner, kicks back, most to Shari, left that three short. Gorham, head up off the dribble. Cole's turn, too much on that one. Long rebound out for Lerner. Into the lane, can't kiss it in with the left hand. Break out for Chance Perkins. Just Hill in front of him, takes the contact, charge called. Yeah, you can see that coming. DJ Hill got himself set well ahead of time. And, you know, Perkins had a chance. You see him sent there. I mean, you had an opportunity to try to do a little something different instead of, you know, going right into the body. You can see that charge coming kind of from a mile away. Kai Johnson subs out Perkins after picking up that foul. So we're two to go in the half. Highland School has been in control for much of it. Hill off the drive. And it's going back down the other way. Guess who? Julian Rivera taking the contact. Again, just, I mean, he's done everything in this first half. Steals, saving balls going out of bounds, offensive rebounds, they're taking the charge, as well as the fact that he's filling it up on the other end. Rivera to inbound. We get our first look in the opposite side. The Murray School sub coming in. Cam Cole running the point. Working past most of Shari. Cross court. Fed back to Cole. Kick out. Johnson up top with 10 on the shot clock. Gorham wants the screen to come from DJ Johnson. Pull up, three ball. 
Miss left, rebound Rivera, fresh shot clock, kick out. That time Cole fights for the miss and throws it off most to Shari. Another possession given to the Hawks with 128 to go. And that's what's going to drive Coach Drizel crazy throughout this first half. You know, just Highland's ability to bang the offensive boards and continue to create second chance opportunities for themselves. It's happened since the opening tip. Gorham waiting for the set to materialize. Coleman hands off for Johnson. Kai Johnson picked up by Mastashari. 14 the shot clock. Gorham guarded by the taller Marable. Over to Cole, down to seven. Inside look, they get the mismatch they want with DJ Johnson. Rattles in and out. They get Rivera for the foul. Almost working like some kind of football drill there where he had to go through two bodies, still got the miss. Whistle first. It was almost as if the two Murray players didn't realize the ball was right behind them. And Rivera just tried to work around them. He gets called for the for the holding foul. And I think that's what their discussion with, with the official right now is, you know, what was he holding them from? <laughs> they didn't seem to be making an effort to get the ball. So Rivera has succeeded as a scorer, rebounder, defender, now trying his hand at being a lawyer and going over with the officials. One-on-one -on -one opportunity on the other end. Front end hit by Tucker. Well, if he can hit this second free throw, and then if you can come up with a defensive stop, if you can get this lead under double digits heading into halftime, you know, that'll be a morale booster for Murray because they've been, you know, bet down by up as many as 16 here in the first half. So if they could somehow find their way to at least get it down to 10 before halftime, that'd be big for them. Starts with a stop here. Frogs in a zone. Four out set for the Hawks. Weave setting things up for the Hawks. Rivera towards the elbow, kick out. Down to three on the shot clock. Kai Johnson has to fire and hits. Not exactly the way they drew it up, but man, I love the motion in the Highland offense. Con constant, you mentioned the weave to start that possession. Constant motion, finally finds a man open and uh, right at the nick of time hits a big three. Lots of Shari, the rip through. They were trying to get the pass out wide. Marable had it tipped and with 6.9 to go. One last shot opportunity off the inbound for the Frogs. And again, that's what Highland's done well all throughout this first half. Getting players in the passing lanes, making everything difficult. Another deflected pass goes out of bounds. Inbound for the Murray School. It goes to Lerner. Down to five. Leans in, air ball the floater. Rebound Johnson, and that's how the Highland School will send it to the half, allowing just 12 points through 16 minutes of action. Logan Miller's squad well on their way at the moment to a bracket 11 championship up 16 at the break. We return, we've got halftime highlights. Second half adjustments to talk through as the Governor's Challenge Day 5 rolls on here on the Delmarva Sports Network. So first half line for Rivera, eight points, nine rebounds, two assists, four steals. Uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tee you up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Brian, how are we looking? Word. Welcome to the Paul Davis Restoration Home Remodeling Halftime Show. Highland School leading the Murray School 28-12 at the break. And, you know, Gary, this is one of those 2K games where, I'll tell you what, the teammate grade of Julian Rivera through the roof right now. It's probably an A-plus at halftime. This kid has done everything stuff in the chat, stat sheet. Gary Schofield, Tim Dahl with all you. You've got the stat line. It is something to behold for Mr. Rivera through 16 minutes of play. Well, if you thought it was your imagination that he was constantly on the ball and constantly finishing, it wasn't. Eight points, nine rebounds, and if I had to guess, I'd say seven of those are on the offensive glass. He also has two assists and four steals. So not bad. An absolutely outstanding first 16 minutes. Interestingly enough, this game reminds me a lot of the game I did yesterday between uh, Cesar Rodney and Easton. CR dominated the first half, much in the same way Highland has, with tenacious defense. Uh, Easton couldn't find a way to get a shot off, and that's really what's happened to Murray in the first half. The defense from Highland has been absolutely suffocating. The big men that we thought would be the focal point of the offense, first three possessions, as soon as Marable touched the ball, triple team came down, he couldn't get anything going, and they've been trying to find a recipe for success ever since. The interesting thing about the game yesterday, and the reason I bring it up, Easton flipped the script in the second half, pulled off a huge comeback for a win. So it could happen here. Defend the, the defensive boards better and find some ways to get some buckets on the offensive end, and Murray may be able to find a way to get back in it. Get more of those adjustments in just a moment. But first, let's get to those highlights from the first half that helped the Highland School build this lead. Look, only 28 points at the break, but the defense has been suffocating. They are a triple knockdown to open the scoring from Chance Perkins. And, you know, when you play defense at the rate that – this Highland School does and rebound the offensive glass. A good board there from Evan Brown. That's all they needed. Well, yeah, and you saw, you know, the, there comes the steal from Rivera, his ability to get out. They run the break really well. Body control there as he's able to let the defender slide by and get the finish. This was a big three at the end of the first quarter. One of the lone bright spots for Murray in the first half from Paris. And there's Rivera again. Steal, drives the length of the four, easy finish. And Rivera's done a ton. Uh, the opposite end of follow here, Murray's school, you know, maybe you want to see them play to their strengths more in the second half if possible because you got a 6'7 kid and a 6'9 kid. They call them the M&M bros for a reason. They do a lot of damage on the interior, both of them double-digit scores, but you know, not nearly even close to that clip right now. Yeah, and it's just been mainly about the defense. Entry passes were difficult on the first couple of possessions, and after that, they kind of switched gears. They went small to start the second quarter. We're really trying to work the perimeter a bit more, maybe hoping that would open up some things for the guys down inside, and it just hasn't played out that way. Mainly, give the credit to Highland because they've defended every inch of the floor tonight. We return. We just got about five minutes and a couple seconds until we return to third quarter action. We re return, though. We will get into those second-half adjustments, see what uh, Coach – Chuck Grizzell can draw up for the Frogs. Meanwhile, what the Highland School can do to continue to roll and cap off a Bracket 11 championship here on day five of the Governor's Challenge. It's the final. We've already had one good one on DSN. We're looking for another. we got second half adjustments coming up next on DSN. Sorry, I kind of jumped the gun there with no. adjustments. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> He's practicing for when the Globetrotters come to town. <laughs> I think he heard me. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome back into the Paul Davis Restoration Home Remodeling Halftime Show here from Court one of the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center. We got our man Tyrone Sharper putting up some shots. And, well, it's going about as well for him as it is for the Murray School in the first half. That one rims out 
You know, the curious thing about these frogs is that, you know, we talked about the two big men underneath. Just three points for Marable. Sure, he has the five boards, but the scoring leaders right now with four points apiece, T.J. Hill, the guard. And also, he's joined by, especially with the help of that three-pointer, mm -hmm. three hit by Nick Paris, the freshman. So all the scoring really coming from ninth graders and just 12 points total for the Frogs. What can they do now to get that comeback? You likened it to Easton Caesar Rodney yesterday, but how do they pull it off? The big thing that switched that game yesterday was the full-court pressure that Easton applied in the second half. Problem is, you can't get that going if you're not scoring on the offensive end. So if that's going to be the philosophy for Coach Trezell to try to create some turnovers and try to go on a run of their own, they're going to have to start by finding ways to get easier shots offensively. I agree with you. I think they kind of got away from what Coach told us was going to be their plan. They work inside out. Uh, Maribel's got to get involved. You know, the other half of the m, &M brothers uh, has to get involved as well. Manny Tucker, uh, we haven't seen him catch the ball on the block yet. So if they just kind of get back to what they do best, I think that would be a good way to start. And if you can get some buckets to fall, then you can put some of that full court pressure on, see how Highland can handle it. I'm not sure that's going to work necessarily, but I think that is a plan they can use because what I've seen from Highland is high energy, big time motors, constantly moving, multiple players that can handle the ball. So I don't know that they'll be phased all that much by the full court pressure, but that's what I would expect to see from Murray in the second half. Well, a pace decent that win yesterday. You got the speediest guy on the floor and a point guard of Sean Moody. Murray has the same in DJ Hill and some bigs underneath who can go to work. We just got about two minutes to go here before we get you ready for third quarter action. But first, folks, a couple of spots that we got to make sure that we hit for all of you. And it starts with, have you dry tech yet? We got to remind you, obviously, dry tech technicians aren't salespeople. They assess your problem and design a custom solution for your needs. Oh, the Denright guarantee and the price match guarantee called dry tech today. Tomorrow's original crawl space experts and gambling can be fun, but you should always set a limit and stay within it. Remember, if you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER 24-7 to helpmygamblingproblem.org for free confidential services. So over 90 seconds to go here before third quarter action. Chuck Drizell and the Frogs retaking the floor as are do the Hawks in a couple of moments. We have a third quarter coming up after this. Mm, perfect. Like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, I know we didn't just bring you on cam there in that second halftime portion for you to, for you to rim out a three from straight away. <laughs> We brought you on cam there for that second halftime portion, a three rimmed out. You you, bri you bricked a three. You didn't get my two in a row now, I mean. No, we didn't get that. We're in break. All right, make sure you're on there for the 315 game. All right, later. You can just tell cool. him if he wants to feel better, maybe I'll shoot at halftime of the next game. And, and <laughs> He'll look like a superstar. Ref, any shot you can hold this for 30 seconds? Any shot you can hold this for 30 seconds? All right. Yeah, 30. Thank you. Back here to court one of the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center alongside Gary Schofield, Tim Nolan with all of you courtside here at the scorer's table. Highland School up by 16, heading into third quarter action. Inbound. Taken away by Chance Perkins. And the Hawks get the rock first to start the second half. Oh, they forgot to reset the team fouls on the scoreboard. Now we're ready to roll. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the Frogs wouldn't mind being the bonus the entire second half. They right. get those back down to zeros. and The Navy commit, Cole, working on the opposite point guard, DJ Hill. More quick ball movement over to Rivera. Draws the double. Corner three ball, Kai Rivera. Rattled in and out. Yeah. In underneath. Rivera was eyeing his 10th rebound. He gets shoved to the hardwood. Manny Tucker just kind of a forearm in the back there, which it's kind of unfortunate because I don't really think he needed to even push Rivera. I think Julian was going to kind of jump his way past that rebound. Instead, they'll get another possession. They go up top for Cole. Guarded by the 6'5". Wants to Shari. Smooth pull up. Fade away Jay from the baseline. Just a beautiful play off the inbound. One dribble pull up. Sinks it for the Navy commit. It's a big bucket for Highland to get this second half started just like the first. Meanwhile, the Frogs go immediately inside. Easy finish, count it, plus the foul for Marable. That's what we talked about at halftime. That's what they need to get back to. That's, that's what their offense is built on, getting the ball down low, letting Marable and Manny Tucker work their magic inside. It's a beautiful entry pass to go up high there. Great catch by Marable. One step finish and gets to the line. Completes a three-point play. That's down to a 15-point game. Kind of a little half-court pressure here from, from Murray. So in pressure, defense collapses, and left alone on the right block, Brown the finish. Helps Cole to the floor. As Hill pushes back ahead in transition for Murray School. Cross court, catch and shoot, Mastashari, that's nylon. That is a beautiful skip pass from James Lerner to find Mastashari in the corner, big three. Rivera off the bounce. Back up top to Cole with 13 left in the timer. Cole wants it back, guarded by Masashari. Down to five on the shot clock. Double comes, guarded by Marable. Spins back, free throw line, fall away. A rebound, Frogs, another stop. Here in the second half. Hill off the bounce. Masashari there for the follow. It's tipped off, Highland School will stay on this end. Yeah, it's a shame DJ couldn't finish there because he did such a nice job on that drive with the body control to kind of just slide around the defender. Just couldn't get enough on the scoop to get it to fall. Bunch break. Set up another shot for Monster Shari. Can't make it two in a row. Marable chasing down the miss. A wild throw to keep it in play, and it was last touch by Kai Rivera. So the Frogs will get the rock and a fresh shot clock. Again, though, Julian Rivera being pesky on the uh, on the boards there, nearly taking that one away from Marable, who did a good job to save it and keep it alive. Rivera listed at just six foot, but not afraid to go into the trees with a hatchet. That works off the screen from Marable. This time gets the roll plus the foul. Well, he missed with the left hand going up. That time ops with the right. A smooth finish. Chance to bring it to 11. And Coach Giselle says he's lightning quick and handles pressure well. You saw both of those on that drive to be able to go to his left, scoop with the right hand, and get fouled amongst the big men. That's a big time play by the freshman. It's awesome seeing Miller talking to his guy, DJ Johnson. He said, Coach, if I'm straight up, he goes from the left to the right hand like that. What do you want me to do? Down to 11 after the three points from Hill. From Eric guarded by Monster Shari, works off the screen from Johnson. And a nice two-man game inside. The flush from Johnson. What an absolutely picture-perfect pick and roll between Rivera and DJ and Julian with the great look with the left to find Johnson wide open for the flush. Second roll, Marable guarded at the elbow. Working on Brown. Rolls off. Hill. Stays in bounds and a fresh shot clock for the Frogs. Denies the screen from Tucker. They swing over for Lerner. Inside feed, Marable walled off Johnson. Double teamed in the paint. He traveled. 
and they have made life difficult for Marable from the opening tip. Every time he gets the ball on the block, it's at least a double team, and he's just having his struggles trying to work his way through those defenders or find an open man for a shot on the perimeter. Grizel incredulous. He didn't think that the pivot foot moved once for Marable. All ball defense provided by Hill. Call into the lane, swatted away by the big man. Two on one off the break. Hill, Euro step into the body of Johnson, blocking foul. And, jo and it's gonna send DJ Hill back to the stripe. And that's a heady play for the freshman too, to show that kind of patience. You know, we saw a play earlier in the game where Perkins, the defender was set well in advance, but made the contact right into him and got the charge this time. DJ does a nice job kind of slowing up a bit. You mentioned the Euro step. It gets to the side to avoid the charge but draw the block. And he's been perfect from the line. Hopefully I don't jinx him, but uh, it's been a huge part of keeping Murray at least around in this game is the uh, free throw shooting. Another one good for Hill. And he's now a perfect seven of seven from the line. In fact, eight of eight is, yeah, that and one free throw hit earlier. Rivera works off the screen from Johnson. Fall away in the paint, no good. Rebound, Marable. 11 point game with just over four to go in the third. Murray needs more stops like that one where they can get Highland to take quick shots and grab defensive boards. That'll help him get back in it. Lerner guarded by Kai Johnson. Down to 13 of the shot clock. Dribble handoff. Kick out. Tucker falling into the lane. A smooth touch. Cut it back to single digits. And that's really the first chance we've seen for Manny on the offensive end. Catches it out on the perimeter. A couple of dribbles at the elbow and shows some nice shooting touch. Rivera rolls inside. Lost the handle. Hill pushing up ahead. Up top to the freshman. Grizel directing traffic from the sideline, getting his guys organized. Tucker, high post. Reversal to Hill. Kept the pivot alive. Lerner, straight away, three ball, money. His Timeout butt. called for by the Hawks. Six point game. Well, and it's been a good run for Murray. And you, you mentioned it at halftime, getting back to what they do best. Their offense has been predicated here in the third quarter by getting the ball to the bigs. The focus most of the game has been to Marimbo, but the last two possessions, Manny Tucker has been kind of the uh, the go-to down on the block, generating some offense, and eventually leads to the kick out and the long three here from Lerner to make it a six-point game. And get those happy feet going, the hop step after letting the release go. You know it's going to be a green bean. James Lerner, cash from long range. The senior guard. And he does look awfully comfortable. I know he went from point guard to shooting guard, but he does look very comfortable at the two, spotting up there. Well, with a stroke like that, you'd be comfortable uh, pretty much on any spot. But, that, you know, that's the other thing is Murray just needed to make some buckets. You know, even when they were struggling in the first half, when they would have an open look, they were rushing and just short shotting. But, you know, they've made a couple of drives to the hoop here. We had the nice uh, elbow shot from Manny Tucker, the big two big threes, one by Mostashari, and now that one there by Lerner. And, uh, you know, you blink, and all of a sudden it's only a six-point game. At halftime, it was 28-12. to 12. Since then, it's a 16-6 run for the Frogs here in the third quarter. And like you brought up, how Tucker's kind of doing the facilitating. You know, that's, you know, of the m and bros, he's more of the facilitator, Maribel the finisher, the guy who gets the boards underneath. But you know, Tucker playing that point forward position from the elbow has facilitated a ton of offense. Cole, off the bounce, kick out. Johnson steps into a three from the wing. Left alone, that's a problem. Big bucket for Highland. Their two D1 commits teaming up there. Lerner picked up by Cole. You know, cross court to Hill, guarded by Gorham. Down to 10 and 9 on the shot clock. Lerner wants another tray ball. This one from the wing, too short. Follows his miss. Into the lane, leans, and hits. That's the first time tonight Highlands got caught kind of standing around. Gave Lerner a chance to follow his shot, grab the offensive board, and finish. 
Cole working on Masashari. Off the screen from Johnson. That two-man game has been awfully successful between the two. It's going to send DJ Johnson to the line for a pair. That was a beautiful feed from Cole. We'll see what DJ can do from the free throw line. You know, but at this point, if you're if you're Highland, you know, don't panic. This is sort of what we expected to see. You know, in the first half, uh, Murray just didn't get things going their way in uh, at the start of the game. So just keep doing what you're doing. You know, you, the the motion that they're running in their offense, as you saw right there, the the beautiful two man play that's opened up some opportunities. If they just continue to do that, you know, just kind of weather this run. Keep the lead, make your free throws, and you'll be okay. And going back to Cam Cole, obviously you got to have a certain type of poise and composure to play Division One point guard, but he just plays at a different speed, not only scoring the rock, but the vision on the floor as well. And that's something you can't teach. And that's what we see, you know, when we say you can just see the difference in kids that are going to go to that next level, it's, it's things like that. It's the basketball IQ that's just, they just have it or they don't. I mean, some of that stuff you can teach as far as the basketball IQ is concerned. But being able to see the floor the way that he's shown he can, that's sometimes that's just something that you're born with. And Highland School also gets the rock underneath after an elbow. Cole took a shot up top from Manny Tucker. Go to Gorham in the corner. Feed back up top to Cole. Cole off the bounce. Into the chest of Mastashari. Cleaned up by DJ Johnson. Contact underneath. Marable thought he was straight up there. And not much more the 6'9 kid could do. And for DJ, I mean, he almost got a little too deep on that drive. Was almost right underneath the backboard, making it more difficult for himself, but able to draw the foul and get to the line. He just knocked down a pair. Chance to push this Hawks lead back to 11. No, it misses the first. Reiner, this game will crown the winner of bracket 11 before we head up to the showcase division after this. Feet inside, stolen away by Cole. Up ahead to Johnson. It's takeoff time, blocked away by Marable. Another foul called on the big man. And the physicality is kind of taking the next step between Maribel and DJ Johnson. Uh, you know, a couple of fouls in succession, uh, successive trips here. Had a few words there at the one stoppage, so something to keep an eye on as the game moves on. I also think maybe a business decision made by DJ Johnson. That he wanted to throw it down, realized who was chasing him, and went for the lion. And you'll see it here on the replay. <laughs> Marable was coming. Good job running the floor for him to make it at least difficult on Johnson, even though he does get the foul. Perfect trip to the stripe. More contact underneath. And they're going to get an intentional foul called against Manny Tucker. That's the second time he's getting called for an elbow. And everybody's going to have to go beyond half court for this one. Well, and it's one of those things where people talk about officials trying to stop chippiness happening. You could see it sort of building here in the last couple of minutes. Culminates with that foul, and the official, by calling the technical, is hoping that that will let cooler heads prevail move fo moving forward. Cole left alone at the stripe for a pair. Extracurriculars at the free throw line. They're taking what was once a six point game and now push it to 13. Oh, rattles home a pair. It's up to 44 30 lead for the Hawks.
Inbound goes to Gorham. Guarded high by Bryce June. Marable switches on with 15 on the shot clock. Rivera, shovel pass. Pull up from Cole, yes! Julian Rivera again. Running the offense to perfection, finding Cole for the wide open shot. Inside drive, Hill through contact. Marable underneath, puts it up and in. Get it back to 14. And a good job there by Marable. Just being patient, letting the defenders jump their way past him, making it an easier layup. Cole's taken over in this quarter. Guarded by Masashari. Gorham top of the key. Rolls back, they go cross court to DJ Johnson. Gorham with it, guarded by Hill, down to seven on the shot clock. Good body control and threads it through the netting. Nice floater and transition. Oh, the sophomore went amongst the big men and just slight hesitation on the shot. Nothing but net. Lost to Shari, past the contact, over to Marable. He's bumped. Two free throws upcoming. And that's what Murray wants to see. Get the ball down low, let their big men work, either getting easy buckets or getting to the free throw line. Marable misses short on the first attempt. Kai Marable, the way Grizel put it, he said he's really starting to become more streamlined. Takes time to you know, get the body and the thought process in sync, especially at his ties, but he's been exciting development. He's averaged a double-double this year. I know things aren't really going his way today, but uh, certainly seems to have a bright future ahead of him. Rivera backing down his man. Saved by Gorham. Somehow walked the tightrope. Down to one. Has to heave at the horn. Foul called on the three. Gorham given no space to land. And he can make this as many as a 19-point game at the break. Yeah, it's about the fourth or fifth time I've seen that over the last couple of days where Shots at the end of a quarter or half where the defender, as you perfectly mentioned, just doesn't give the shooter somewhere to land. And the officials are going to call that on you every time, even if you contend, well, I was straight up. Well, when you come forward and into the landing space, this became a point of emphasis, you know, when the Warriors were done in by that a few years ago heading into the finals. And uh, now that's trickled down to all levels. You have to give that shooter, uh, you know, appropriate space for their feet to come down. And when you don't, you're going to give them three free throws. Gorham referred to as a high IQ kid, showed it there. The expectation is that when he's ready, he'll be the primary guard taking over for Cole. Missed all three at the stripe, but still a 16-point lead. At the third quarter, as it was at halftime for Highland School, up 48-32. to Fourth quarter action coming up next on DSN. To find out who our next game is. You doing the next game? I am not. Tyrone is back. Mm. Oh, no. Stats down, I think. Well, there we go. Fourth quarter, about to get rolling here between the Murray School and the Highland School from Virginia. Number four team in the state. Hawks looking to 
cap off a nice start to the season with their 10th victory and get a banner. Leading scorer for the Hawks with 12 points, DJ Johnson, Cameron Cole right behind him. Meanwhile, DJ Hill leading the Murray School with nine. This man, Marable, has also been picking up his play. He finished the third quarter with eight points, eight boards. Heads the line, a chance of heading to double figures. Yeah, I guess I spoke too soon when I mentioned that things didn't seem to be going his way today. It's uh, But to have eight and eight coming into the fourth, he's averaging 13 and 11, so kind of right on par for what he's done all year. And he just speaks to the really the bottomless potential with this young man. You, you sleepwalk into eight and eight. It surprised us looking at the stat line. Yeah, I mean, because just visually, you know, if you've watched from the start of the game, you say, oh, they're having their struggles with, uh, you know, Marable down low. But, you know, he's doing what he's done all year. Finally gets one to fall from the free throw line. It'll give him nine for the day. Nine points for Marable. Ties with DJ Hill for the team lead. Cole working off the defense. The feed inside to Highlands leading scorer, DJ Johnson. Guarded by the Yale football commit, Bryce June. That's pretty. It absolutely is. Almost doesn't need any description. Just great body control, the hang, and a beautiful touch around the rim. Masashari popping stop. Nope. Long rebound, Rivera. He's in a double figures on the boards. Rivera works through the double team. Cross court, foul first. We'll get Lerner with the foul. It's going to put Rivera at the line. We'll take another look at that trap as well. And maybe a fortuitous one for the Murray School because they had two guys cross court. And Rivera's done a nice job throughout this game of being able to find that open shooter from all areas of the floor. So you're right, probably a, a break for them to only have to have Rivera shoot two instead of maybe another triple going down. Rivera missed the front end. Rebound falls to Paris. Marable swings for Hill. Baseline drive, blocked away, D.J. Johnson. Cole with head of steam, hands off, Gorham. Leaning into the lane, a kiss off the top of the glass. A uh, lost art of using the bank shot. Tim Duncan made a living out of it. That was a great job by the sophomore to go off glass. Lerner using the body control. Marable up ahead. He'll head back to the free throw line. That was a great feed. You know, the drive and then Marable, kind of the trailer coming from the elbow, had an open lane initially. Closed quickly, but he does get fouled and gets to go to the line for two. <laughs> Marable rims the first in and out. He has struggled from the free throw line today. Well, after this contest, you can once again catch the very, very talented St. Benedict's prep. Those guys coming up from, excuse me, coming down from New Jersey. One of the top 10 teams in the country. Cole pulls up to the wing with Gorm. Cole resets, 10 on the shot clock. Picked up by Manny Tucker. Fall away, yes. 19 point lead for the Hawks. Well, he is the engine that drives Highland and he has shown why he's been able to score from pretty much any angle on the floor and what a beautiful turnaround. Freshman Paris pulls up on the opposite end, he's fouled. He's had some good minutes for Murray 
Tonight hit a big three at the end of the first quarter. Been active on the defensive end. He's just a freshman standing at 6-2. Coach relies on him to play you know, different positions on the floor. Uh, he's savvy out there. and We've seen that uh, on display as he gets a chance to put a couple more on the stat sheet here. Missed the first attempt. Nick Paris. You know, when you are trying to, to build and mount the comeback, you have to take advantage of the opportunities to score without the clock running at the free throw line. And aside from D.J. Hill, it's not been a good day from the charity stripe for Murray. You know, you do enough games, you learn people's tendencies. And for you, I, I get that. For, for the head coach of UMES, Jason Crafton, it was tenacity, aggression. For you, it's free throws. You're a huge stickler at the charity stripe. Well, I mean, it's, it's such a big part of the game. That's a nice play inside from Manny Tucker. Um, you know, when you can, especially when you're behind, when you can score points without losing clock, that's how you kind of chip away into a lead. And when they're giving you those opportunities, you got to shoot better than, you know, 30%. And Tucker makes a nice offensive play, but then gets called for the foul right after the inbounds. Just to speak to what you're saying right now, the line Marable entered this quarter, two for five from the stripe. Nick Paris is one of two. Manny Tucker, one of two as well. The lone exception, DJ Hill has been perfect at the stripe. Right. And I'll give coaches props too, Coach Kraft. I mean, tenacity is absolutely awesome, and we've seen that from Highland tonight as well. I have been just enamored with the amount of motion and cutting and constant activity that they have on the offensive end. All too often these days, you'll see offenses that are predicated on one guy, one-on-one -on -one matchups and everybody else just kind of standing around. We don't see that from really either of these teams, but especially on the Highland side. Nobody home underneath, but Paris missed the bunny. Cole gliding through traffic, lost the handle. Yeah, just trying to do a little too much on that drive. Lerner in the body of Gorham had it knocked off his leg, and it's headed back the other way. Man, that's good defense from Jeremiah to hustle back on the break there and to swamp that ball away without any arm contact, which I think we'll get an argument from uh, the Murray bench there. But uh, that's, that's just solid defense. A sophomore guard standing at 5'10", transferred in from St. James in Maryland this year, and uh, he's showing that he's going to pay dividends for years to come. Rivera in transition, off the window, he beat Marable to the spot. His ability to go right or left has been very impressive. And again, a, you know, a finish over Maribel with the left hand, gets him in double figures. He's had a heck of a night. Paris, through contact, little English. He's headed back to the free throw line himself. Again, another freshman that is going to, you know, provide probably more scoring as he gets more experience and more minutes, but you know he's shown the ability to shoot the three. Nice drive to the bucket there. He's played pretty well on the defensive end. Uh, it's been a pretty good night for, for the young man uh, as well, Nick Paris. It's the first attempt. Lot of promising youth on this squad. Paris and freshman guard DJ Hill again, plenty of minutes again with Hill. Someone that Giselle says is, you know, I've never had a freshman like this kid. He's been impressive. Wants to show everybody back. He's a junior, as will Marable. One for two trip to the line. 21 point advantage, Hawks. Just about four to go. Cole works back. Fall away. They're going to get him with the offensive foul. Yeah, just saying he kind of dropped the shoulder in there before he tried to turn around. Murray catches a break. Both teams are foul away from being into the double bonus. More free throws. <laughs> Hill directing traffic. Lerner catch and shoot. Left it short. Rebound fought for, and it's going the way of the Highland School. Yeah, Rivera and Johnson in there kind of double teaming on the box out of Maribel, who was still almost able to corral that rebound, just couldn't squeeze it. West June checks back in. Giselle says that he loves having a guy like June who 
has constant energy. He's contagious. Loves playing defense, and he gets his teammates to play defense as well. There he is, cleaning up the glass. Hill, backdoor cut learner, read by Cole. And three minutes to go here and a 21 point advantage for the Hawks. Bracket 11 championship in favor of the school from Virginia. Cole wrestled to the floor. They're gonna call it on Lerner. He was, uh, I'm sorry, actually they're calling it on Hill with the grab from behind before Lerner got the ball. So James might have been right. He may have had all ball, but the foul was on Hill. Well, it won't be traveling too far from here in Salisbury. Going up to Annapolis, and safe to say the midshipmen are getting a good one. Yeah, and, you know, as we've talked about throughout the game, I mean, he's shown every aspect. He's been able to shoot the ball from deep, create his own shot, quick off the dribble. Uh, I like, you know, the play that he made defensively on the last possession for Murray for his ability to kind of out of the corner of his eye see that back cutter and knowing that he could cut that pass off. There's not a lot of players that are going to read that first of all, and then, you know, have the athletic ability to get to the pass. On offense, he continues to push this lead for the Hawks. It swelled to 23 with under three to go. Binder, great hoops on the way for you folks. Following this contest, as I mentioned, St. Benedict's in New Jersey taking on Dream City, Arizona, led by Memphis Commit. And afterwards, we got Mount St. Joseph, the top team in Baltimore. They'll be taking on St. Stephen, St. Agnes from Virginia, followed by DeMatha and Bergen Catholic to round out the loaded showcase slate from this Governor's Challenge. Down to three on the shot clock. June forced to pull up just inside the arc. In fact, they didn't call that a three. Missed anyways, and DJ Johnson brings it back down the floor. Let's get two more Delaware-Maryland clashes. Gordon wasn't expecting that pass, been able to grab it. Yeah. Seaford, Stephen Decatur, followed by James M. Bennett and Cape Henlopen to finish off the 40th Governor's Challenge. Attendance record was shattered yesterday. They're going to continue climbing through that ceiling again today. Yeah, I mean, that's an amazing slate. Obviously, the showcase teams, names you recognize, maybe not, you know, players that you know of yet, but you're going to be excited to see them. All those schools have, you know, a great history of basketball greatness, not only on the high school level, but, you know, having kids move on to both D1 and to, to the pros. But as far as those two local games tonight, if you haven't had a chance to see Seaford play yet, they are super fun to watch. They like to run and get out. They've got three or four guys that can easily score in double figures. Uh, James M. Bennett that uh, I saw beat Polytech here uh, the other day, they've got two youngsters that in Jace Hudson uh, and the other young man's name is escaping me at the moment. Sky Small. Yes, we're just so fun to watch. They've got a lot of good role players as well. And Cape Henlopen is a team we're just kind of trying to figure out who are they going to be. You know, will they be somebody that can – make some hay or at least maybe play spoiler uh, to the Smyrnas and the Dovers of the world in the Henlopen North. So that's a super good slate of four games to go. So grab the popcorn, sit back, get comfy. Tim's going to be with you for a little while longer. I'm going to take a break and come back. It's going to be a good day. Yeah, it'll be Zach Parnes on the call for the next contest for St. Benedict's and Dream City. I'll return for Mount St. Joseph, led by Amani Hansbury, the Illinois commit, one of the top forwards in the nation. They'll be going up against St. Stephen's, St. Agnes. A squad kind of in a rebuilding year of sorts. A technical foul, the wheel's starting to come off here for Murray School. They issued it to Paris, and Cole's been automatic at the stripe. So just putting on the finishing touches here, Highland School will win bracket 11, their first trip to the Governor's Challenge. St. Stephen's, St. Agnes, they lost four players graduating going on to Division I schools. Also had two players transfer, including... One of their top guys who actually is with DeMatha now. We got to see him in action yesterday. No longer with the Saints. One of their top players who headed on. You've got Mason So with DeMatha, and then Connor Dubsky went up north at Putnam Science Academy in Connecticut. Fresh faces onto the floor for the Hawks. And you're going to get a foul underneath. 64 37 lead for the Hawks. Yeah, it was Shyvaz Taylor, the sophomore guard for Highland that 
made the drive there. Almost got called for a travel, but apparently got fouled before he lost his pivot foot. First look at Taylor, a JV guy last season who, this coach says, is taking his strides day by day. Don't know if he's ready for, for a lot of minutes, but and getting some here, and now another substitute. Evan Thornton checking in, a sophomore forward. So he's one of the most athletic kids on the team. Second rims out. Just two starters remaining on the floor. The two commits, DJ Johnson and Cam Cole. Fresh faces in for the Frogs as well. Getting bumped there, Toby Lindo. Yeah, they're going to get Cole for the foul. Kind of bounced off the screen into uh, the dribbler there, Lindo. So I don't know they necessarily intended to foul him, but the contact was made. Back-to-back -back makes at the line. It's down to 25-point game. Thornton guarded by Maribel. Nice change of speeds. Cross court. Three ball. Rims home. Whole bench getting up. Excited for Shavos Taylor. You know, that's one of my favorite things to see. You know, when, when some of the reserve guys get to come in, especially some of the younger guys, and you see the upperclassmen and the starters that are still engaged in, in it, that's when you know that they're building the right culture. And I love what I've seen from Highland start to finish in this game. Opposite end. That three was hit. A little discrepancy with the time right now on the clock. 30 second timeout issued to Highland. Whatever got figured out, gets taken care of. Kai Johnson in the game. Seemed like they were, the Highland coaches were thinking it should be 70 to 39. Yeah, well, it was 64. To 39 before that three-pointer, so right. appeared everybody had it correct. Six left in the shot clock. Taylor just hit the three. Has to put that shot up. Blocked away. Throw it underneath at the horn. Count it plus the foul. As impressive as the putback was there by Thornton grabbing that rebound, as soon as Taylor went to drive the basket, all five guys still left on the Highland bench were ready to you know, set the fireworks off, even though he didn't get the finish. And then when the follow came from Thornton, then it was party time. I love it, love it. 30-point game, they're still engaged. That's why they're the fourth best team in Virginia, looking to continue to climb those rankings. Well, the Hawks thought they were at 70 after the last three-pointer. Thornton a chance to get him there. The old-fashioned three-point play. Frogs going into their bench as well. Another sub comes on. Thornton can't hit the free throw. Shot clock turned off. Off the hop, Lindo. Guarded by Leo Kitty. Feet inside. Loose on the baseline. Kept alive. Just over the hands of Thornton, down to two seconds to one. Follow away at the horn, no good. It's a 30-point victory as the Highland School takes home bracket 11. After this, we head up to some even better basketball competition. You got St. Benedict's from New Jersey, Dream City out of Arizona. Before that, we're going to wrap this one up. We got highlights. We just got our Stanley Steamer Player of the Game Award to give out following a 30-point win for the fourth best team in the whole state of Virginia, the Highland School rolling over Ray School from D.C. They win it, 69-39. Post game next. Probably Cole, right? Yeah, he's the leading scorer with 20. That's number two. Yeah, number two for uh, the Hawks. And then close runner up for Rivera. <laughs> 
Damn, 10 for 10 from the line for Cole. How much, how many, how much time we got? How much time we got? You got it. Yep. The Bayside teams where your center six five. <laughs> you get these schools where your guard, your centers could be you know six eight or whatever, but uh, you know your guard could still be like five eight, five nine, five ten. Then you get to these Amazons, where it's right. like <laughs> both Dream City and St. Benedict's. Yeah. Every single guard forward, it's like six seven, six eight. Mm -hmm. It's insane walking amongst those guys, and like not a single one of them's over 180 pounds. Right. And they were just born to play basketball. It's wild, right? One fifty one for the highlights team. Okay. Welcome to the Paul Davis Restoration Home Remodeling Post Game Show. Some of the top high school talent in the country getting ready to rock and roll here between Dream City and St. Benedict's. But first, we're going to wrap up a pretty darn good game in its own right. Some great talent. Highland School, the number four team in Virginia. The Hawks played like it. A run there to start the third quarter. Ray School did exactly what you were talking about. Getting the rock inside. Mayor will get some touches. Tucker as well facilitating well from the high post. And then a couple fouls. Pushing and shoving underneath. Next thing you know, it was time for the Hawks to take off. Yeah, and the interesting thing too during that run was, you know, Highland didn't panic. They kind of just kept their composure and then as you mentioned, the foul, then a technical foul. Things got a little chippy, and all the momentum that Murray had built went away pretty quickly, and then it was pretty much a cakewalk for Highland from there. That game decided bracket 11. In fact, this Highland school team was moved up a bracket, and they still end up winning the championship by 30 points. We'll show you the highlights, how the Hawks got to this victory. A 30 ball over the Frogs against the talented group, the Murray School, and it started off with that young man. He was the catalyst of offense. Cameron Cole, Navy commit at point guard. They're finding Chance Perkins early. And then off the drive, this was the story of the first quarter. Offensive rebounding for Highland. That time it was Evan Brown. During this packet, you're going to see Julian Rivera, who was ridiculous in the first quarter, coming up with a steal there. and He's going to run the floor and finish. But uh, that was really what kind of set the tone for Highland to get out to such a big lead was their ability to hit the offensive boards. There's a nice three from the freshman Paris for Murray. Here's Rivera with a steal. He's going to run the floor and finish. Um, so Highland did and was suffocating defensively. There's a putback from Maribel, but it was not enough of that in the first half for Murray. Those of you who stuck with us for this contest, we appreciate you tuning in. We are going to cut off the highlights here a little prematurely as we only got nine minutes to go before St. Benedict's and Dream City. But you get the gist first half, and they kept it rolling into the second frame. So Highland School comes away with the W. On the other side, we'll have our post-game award to give out to Stanley Steamer, player of the game on the other side. Yep. Okay. 
Welcome back to the Paul Davis Restoration Home Remodeling Post Game Show. One final time alongside Gary Schofield. Tim Nolan with all of you. Gary, it was kind of a tough decision there for that Stanley Steamer player of the game given just how well Julian Rivera played in the first half, the do-it-all glue guy. But in the second, it ultimately would end up going to Cameron Cole, just the way that he played closer down the stretch. Yeah, he was the he was the key player in the second half for Highland. You see here off the dribble, quick jump shot, uh, finishes as the game's leading scorer with 20 points. And here he drives inside, beautiful turnaround. He added five rebounds, had a couple of assists, uh, two steals as well. You know, he did it all for Highland, and uh, it's easy to see why, why next year, you know, he'll be donning the, uh, the Navy and uh, gold in Annapolis. Yes, indeed. A couple things we want to give out before we get you off the St. Benedict's, taking on Dream City. First, especially to Jeff Melvin, running breaks back in our studio. He's what makes us look like a coherent TV broadcast, taking care of all the other messages we got to get in. Also, to our cameraman, Trey Beckett, killing it. 